Hi everybody, my name is Christian Führer. I work here at Büchi headquarters in Flavil, here at the Global Service Support Department. I've been working here for quite a long time, so in German they would call me an Alter Hase, which then in English means an old stager. And I think this is very good for you because during my 13 years that I've been working here, I've seen the development of many devices um, and this experience I would like to show with you. There are some which I know really like the palm of my hand. One of them is this device, which I'm sure many of you also know. So this is really the great flash pump. Okay. This pump is produced just next to us here in the production or the assembly department, which we will just show to you. So here you can see then the whole assembly line. Then now I've just grabbed my service coat and I would like to go and show some of the tips and tricks to you about this flash pump in the customer lab. So before I talk to you about the tips and tricks, I want to give you some more information about the flash pump. The flash pump was actually developed to be used with our modular SEPA core line. You can see here we have the X50 um, complete system with the two pumps and the PC using the SEPA core control software. Then we also have here the two um, easy lines, so easy flash. And with these pumps, we have never really had any troubles in the past. So I was very happy when the decision was taken to only make minor modifications and improvements on the pump so it could be used here on the compact pure platform. So as you know, I'm from Brazil. So the following tips and tricks, they are as easy as making a caipirinha if you know the procedure. There are three main issues that I want to talk about. So here related to the flash pump, this thicker hose um, is the inlet line, the thinner one here, outlet. So one of the issues could be that you have air bubbles here in the inlet. Second could be that you have air bubbles in the pump head lines or outlet. And the third one could be that we have no solvent at all flowing through the pump. So it's actually not sucking any solvent. The first issue, if there are air bubbles in the inlet hose, what you would have to check is on the rear side of the device. You have here the solvent manifold with the four inlets. You just have to make sure that these fittings are tight and obviously that the hoses are not bent. On the other end of the hose, of the solvent inlet hose, you have the filter. And here you also have to make sure that this fitting is um, very tight or that it's just properly connected. That should solve the problem with air bubbles in the inlet line. So for the second issue, if you have air bubbles in here, the pump head outlets, so one of these three tubes, or in the main outlet, the thin tube, the procedure is actually to rinse um, the system and also the pump using hot water. We, as we are very famous rotor vapor manufacturer, we can use the heating bath from the rotary evaporator, and I will go and get that now. So here we can see I've heated the water between 60 to 70 degrees, and here it's very comfortable with this rotary evaporator. You can just take the bath with the hot water, which we can use for the rinsing. So here we have then our hot water. The solvent line, number one, inlet hose, so you have to take it out of the bottle. And this we would then also put here into the hot water. On the screen, this procedure now we have to do in the service screen. So just be aware that when you do that, all safety um, features are deactivated. So this is really something for you to do only for this rinsing procedure. 
for that you have to go here into tools the last option service you're requested to enter a password this password is pure 01 with a capital P now you're in this um, service screen what you have to do now here is select the solvent so line 1 the flow rate at the maximum 250 milliliters per minute and then as soon as we select here enable flow it will start so make sure the waste hose is in the waste bottle we click here on start and also do not forget that the bypass has to be installed now the pump is running so it's slowly going to fill here with water we can see that and what i would do at the same time the solvent hose here you take in and out of the water so that you also have some air going through the line and that will help to loosen any dirt or any of the valves in here it gives a little pulse so this would be the procedure and you can pump at least one liter to two liters of water hot water So now we can um, actually stop the flow rate, take the hose here out from the water and the next step would be to rinse with some ethanol so you can just put the inlet hose here into the ethanol bottle and I would say here we can change the flow to for example 50 milliliters per minute and we enable the flow again. Here again, just uh, let this ethanol flow through the system. If you want, you can also do that trick here, just inserting it in and out from the ethanol just a few times. And I would say rinse for uh, two, three minutes. During this time, in the waste bottle, you can also check here, so the waste outlet, that you have a constant um, solvent flow. So this indicates that everything is functioning correctly. So the third issue is uh, when the pump is running and there is no solvent flow at all, as we can see here. Um, what you will need is a piece of hose with the same dimensions as the inlet hose and a large syringe, syringe filled with ethanol, for example. This procedure also has to be done in the service screen See, flow, solvent is already flowing at a flow rate of, of 75 milliliters per minute. Then on the pump, you have to remove here the inlet hose. So unscrew it completely. Let's put it here aside. Connect then your piece of hose. And then with the large syringe, you can just put it here into the inlet, make sure that you hold it here quite firmly. And now when you're injecting solvent, you're going to generate an overpressure on the pump inlet and you will see we already have solvent flow. Once that is good, you can stop the pump and reconnect the line which comes from the flask and then the pump should continue running again. So everything is connected. We can enable the solvent flow. And then in a few seconds, once everything is running again, you can check then the waistline if you have a constant flow. So now um, I showed you actually the tips and tricks for the flash pump. You should know what to do if uh, the system is not sucking any solvent, if you have air bubbles in the lines. And um, if these tips and tricks didn't help solve the problem, then you will need a service technician. So I kindly ask you to contact your local service support. And I look forward to seeing you then in the next video.
and we'll enjoy my coffee now. Thank you.